You know how sometimes parents will name their kids after plants? Like nice names, you know, like Rose, Lavender, Daisy, Sage. Well, our little amino acid today had the same treatment, but sadly, they weren't as lucky to have such a nice plant as their name. That's right, asparagine, because the plant it was first found in is asparagus, so it's named after asparagus. And who doesn't love asparagus? Am I right? So here's the molecular structure of asparagine. Here's the side chain, and this side chain is called a carboxamide side chain, which means it has a carboxyl group right here and an amide group right here. And that's what makes it polar. It's non-essential, which means you don't necessarily have to get it from your diet. So asparagus doesn't have to be in your diet necessarily, but vegetables and fiber are good for you kids. Asparagine is polar neutral and there's not a lot that's actually special about it. Like, I mean, it's amino acid named after asparagus. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. And you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never- One thing about it that's important in proteins is actually, it's in these super secondary structures. Is it? one of the videos I have for that. It'll be in the corner, I don't remember which one. But they're in what's called ASX turns and ASX motifs. Now, ASX actually stands for AS and then anything, because in these motifs, either asparagine or aspartic acid, in which asparagine is derived from, that's why it's not essential, can participate in these motifs. So it can be either ASN for asparagine or AS for aspartic acid, and that's what the X stands for. Now, ASX turns are about two to three amino acids, and they participate in hydrogen bonding because the side chain allows them to, and they're very similar to the ST turns and motifs. ASX motifs are four to five amino acid residues that have two internal hydrogen bonds, just like the ST motifs, and they, they have the ability to cap an alpha helix. Now, what this means is when you have the internal bonding within an alpha helix, you don't want it to fall apart. So normally if an ASX motif isn't there, the backbone would cap it of some sorts to prevent the hydrogen bonds from coming apart and the helix from unraveling. But if there's an ASX motif, it caps the motif almost like a telomere on a chromosome and it prevents it from unraveling. So that's pretty important. Asparagine is also important for a specific type of post-translational modification. Glycolization. I talked about this before, the video will be in the that thing. Asparagine has a special type of glycolization called N-linked glycolization. This is different from the O-linked glycolization I talked about earlier, because this time the nitrogen is the one participating in the bonding. Now, in N-linked glycolization, what's called an oligosaccharide is added onto the side chain. Now, an oligosaccharide is basically multiple monosaccharides put together. Now, you may be thinking, what the heck, isn't that a polysaccharide because monomers and polymers? Well, monomer is just one unit, oligo, or at least I hope that's how you pronounce it, is like a smaller version of polysaccharides. There are normally 20 or less of the monomers joined together. It's a small string of carbohydrates that's not quite considered a polysaccharide that's slapped onto the side chain, and the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus is where the post-translation modification happens and where the carbohydrates get added on, and then it can become a protein and do whatever it needs to do. So that's what asparagine does, other than be an asparagus and make your pee weird. Bye!